Hi everyone, my name is Kelly Edwards and welcome to your yoga practice today. This video is going to be a restorative or a yin style class. So it's a little bit new. I haven't taught this in person here at Prairie Stone, so I thought I would try something. And I would love feedback. Let me know what you think of this. So restorative or yin yoga is all about flexibility, range of motion, and rehydrating the fascia. So it's more stretch flexibility based. The vinyasa flow, even gentle yoga um, or hatha is more of the yang. Um, so if you have yin and yang or yin and yang, depending on how you pronounce it. Um, so the, the yang, the yang is heat, is fire. Whereas the yin is cooling and calming. So we're going to get into that, into the yin today. The um, idea behind restorative yoga is to set yourself up in a position, and lots of props are needed for this, um, and then we just stay there. And I will be timing us. We'll spend um, at most five minutes in each pose. And so this goes beyond the typical five breath or 30 seconds in a stretch. So there's going to be some like some levels that we're going through. Initially, as we drop into a pose, it's gonna feel like you need to kind of move around, there's some discomfort. Um, and then as you sit there longer and the body starts to open and gravity helps to pull you down and helps to open the body, you start to drop into a new uh, level or layer of the muscle. And then it starts to feel calming, the body starts to settle. And it's very, very grounding to practice restorative poses. So I thought I would bring this to you in this time with the quarantine, when everything can feel kind of airy, spacey, changing, chaotic. We come to the earth, we ground, we root ourselves, we feel more balanced. So because of the longer holds, if it's too much for you, please feel free to come out of the stretch Move your body a little bit. A child's pose, cat and cow, or dog, down dog are welcome. And then drop back into it as soon as you can. It will give you a little tip, though. Usually restorative classes are harder on the mind than it is on the body. So the mind will want to give up before the body is ready to. So check in with that. Are you just getting a little anxious, or does the body actually need to break? So... My, um, the, or my, my idea for this class today, what I want to work, what I want to stretch, is opening up the front of the body. So again, a lot of us have maybe been in this hunched position, sitting more, watching TV more, on the computer more. So I want to open up chest, I want to open up the hips and the quads. And then along with that lower body, we want to access the hamstrings as well. So I know it's not in the front, but what we do for the hamstrings helps the quads and vice versa. So for our class today, blocks will be handy. If you don't have blocks, you can use books, strap, scarf, uh, or towel or belt will be used instead if you don't have a strap, blankets, and a bolster or pillows if you have pillows around your house. So we're going to just get started right away, move right into our first position. We're going to start in the upper body with a horn opener. So with your blocks, you're going to set them so that they are perpendicular to each other. So perpendicular is intersecting. You can start on the lowest level. And I actually would probably recommend this for most of us to begin lower level. As we sit here over time in the shape, if the shoulders are stretching nicely, the chest is opening, you can lift up and bring your blocks a little bit higher so that you can intensify that way. So where you begin in your shapes, in our holds, is not where you have to end. You can be slowly building intensity. So I'm going to start lower. Okay, blocks again, perpendicular, like a little T-shape at the top of the mat. 
if you don't have your blocks, you may start with a blanket or a pillow instead. And so more of your back is just going to be supported if you're using this versus just the shoulders if you're using the blocks. All right. So my setup, and this one we're going to hold for five minutes. Okay. So my setup here, I'll lie down on the blocks, but I want to show you first that this first block should be set here on my back. Okay. So the bottom of the block is at the bottom of my shoulder blades. And then the rest of my shoulder blade can rest on the block going up to my neck. The second block is for my head to rest on. So if the block is too low, it's going to feel like it's pinching and our hips might lift up off of the ground. Okay. So it shouldn't be uncomfortable when you're here. It should definitely feel like a stretch, um, but it shouldn't cause any pain. So I'm going to start to lie myself down. Again, my hips I want to keep on the earth. First block, that bottom of the block is going to come to the base of my shoulder blades. And you see that I'm sort of arcing to get my head back out of the second block. Hips are down, I have a smooth lumbar curve, and there's no pinching or discomfort with the vertebrae. You may begin with your knees bent, like I am here, or start to extend the legs straight. Now, the wider that you open your legs, the more that you'll start to feel a release through the hip flexors and quads here. So you can do that as well. All right, this is our first shape. I think I've talked enough. <laughs> so I'm starting my timer here. We'll stay in this for five minutes. Arms, the more open that your arms reach, the more that you'll feel this stretch across your chest. Again, maybe initially at this first level, there's a little bit of fidgeting, a little bit of adjustments. We're just trying to make sure that we are relatively comfortable here. It's not going to feel like nothing is happening to you. Definitely a stretch. You can close your eyes, soften your face, and just begin to breathe deeply. I'll let you know as we're moving through the time that we're about halfway through each hold, so that if you choose, you need to come out at that point and give yourself a break, you can. Or if you're ready to go a little bit deeper, you can drop in deeper as well. up to our halfway mark here. I'm going to choose to go up a level on my blocks because my chest is feeling quite open and spacious today. And the alignment is still the same. Hips are on the ground, bottom of the block at the base of the shoulders. Your palms up. 
look into these tinier, more subtle spaces for active tension. A little bit longer here. You can start to reach your arms more up towards the top of the mat, but keep the backs of your hands on the ground. So I'm not trying to lift up and hold. I'm staying very heavy over my props. But by lifting the arms up a little bit more, you can change where you feel the stretch across the chest. We've got less than a minute left here, so just keep breathing deeply. I love the ending of the shape because my breath feels like it can go deeper after the intercostal muscles here that have the rib cage have started to open. So it feels so good to take a couple of deep breaths here. Let's take two more breaths. Slide your arms back towards your side body. You can bring your feet closer in together as well. Go ahead and bend your knees, planting your feet. And roll yourself very slowly off of your blocks. Lie on your side, whether you went to right or left, doesn't matter too much here. But when you get onto your side, hug your knees up towards your forehead. Let your upper back round a little bit here. You can go ahead and move your blocks off of your mats. Grab your strap and lie back down. All right, so we're going to go into a hamstring stretch here. I turn myself around because the sun's in my face a little bit, which I love. The sun is amazing today. <laughs> so, with your strap, we're going to take that right leg up into a hamstring strap. So you can place the strap around the ball of the foot, and as you pull down on the tails of the strap, that should help to flex your foot. So don't try to go too much in the flexion of the toes. So don't muscularly activate the foot. Let this be an energetic thing as you pull on the strap. Now I'm starting with my left knee bent. And this is going to help my right hamstring out. Keep that right knee softer, so make sure you're not locking it out. A sweet little bend in the knee. And then think of drawing your thigh towards your tummy to stretch the hamstring here. Now, if this is feeling okay on the hamstring, on the glute, the low back, you can start to go straighter in this left leg. And there is a ton of distance that you can travel here. So it doesn't have to go from uh, bent all the way to straight. You can slowly be traveling that foot farther and farther away from you. Right, so we'll hold here again for five minutes. We'll do each leg for five. Now, if you've been sitting at a desk or on your phone watching TV more and your neck has started to bother you, I'm going to take my strap and make a big loop out of my strap. My strap is all over right now. <laughs> so I'm going to take that uh, loop in my strap. And it goes around the ball of the foot. 
And then you can place it around the back of your head as well. So now, what I'm creating is sort of a, a zero gravity environment for my neck. So my head is in the strap, my foot is in the strap, and now as my neck is lifted a little bit, there's no weight on my neck here. So what I can do is I look up at the toes, I can turn my foot to the side because I'm watching the toes, my head turns. Then I can come up through center and drop the leg over to the left, which will stretch a little different part of the hip here, pure fullness and so as. Or I can just stay center, maybe take a little bounce. But this is so freeing for the back of your neck. So you can feel free to stay um, with that around the head. I'm not going to do that because I have a mic around my head and there's enough, <laughs> enough there for me to work with today. So I love the neck in the strap or the head in the strap. I watch TV that way. So doing good things for neck and upper back and for lower body as well. Again, just nice, deep breath here. Like I said before, the mind likes to give up before the body does. We're coming up to our halfway mark, so if you need to release, take a moment, breathe, and then come back into it. Or you can maybe start to extend that left leg a little bit longer here. One more thing. When you're here holding onto the strap, if you don't have your head in the strap, make sure that you're not rolling your hands like this in the strap to pull the foot closer. Instead, walk your hands up the strap. So when we roll like this and then pull, we do some funky things to our wrists. And if this class is geared towards those who have been sitting for long periods, the wrists are already going to be weak and tight. So don't give them more obstacles here. So we have about one minute left here. Just notice how your pose has changed. It even just feels different from the beginning of this hold to now. One more breath here. You can release your right foot from the strap. If your head is in the strap, you can remove it as well. I like to bend the right knee, hug it into the heart. Just gently rock the knee from side to side. Then start with that right knee bend. So bring the foot down to the earth. Left leg comes up. Place the strap around the ball of the foot, and again, it's around the ball so that as you pull on the strap, that flexes the foot for us. And then if you have your strap in that loop, 
You can place your head in those foot again. Again, creating that zero gravity environment for the neck. Make sure that your eyes and nose are pointing up to the big toe. Then you can open your leg to the side, bring it across the feet, just to change the feelings here. Time is starting for this one. Make sure that that left knee isn't locking out. It's not hyperextended. There's a sweet little bed layer. Again, you're trying to pull the thigh towards the tummy first. Notice in a loving way how this side compares to the right. So I definitely feel tighter on my left hamstring. So I'm going to keep this right knee bent for a bit longer this time. Right? But if you're feeling good, feel free to start extending that right leg longer. Eyes can close and just deep breath here. Soften through your jaw and your eyebrows. Nice deep breath here. We're getting close to our halfway mark. We're just about there again. So if that right leg feels like it can start to go longer, if you feel like you want to intensify, go ahead and do that. If you need a break, coming out. Taking a moment, moving the body a little bit, and then when you're ready, try to come back in and meet us in the stretch. Notice how over these longer holds, how the body change changes. So I really love restorative yoga, um, not only because it's very grounding for me. I, I'm an Aquarius, so I'm a little bit airy. <laughs> I like to spend time with the clouds. So restorative really, really grounds me. But it also sort of is instant gratification. You know, I'm, I'm actually feeling and seeing the benefits of stretching right away. Even in just the time that I'm holding here, my right leg is going longer. This left leg feels easier to come in. So the body is changing. I can see it. I can feel it. And I don't think we often get that in some of our other practices or other workout modalities. Got just a few more breaths there.
One more breath. Take your foot and your head out of the strap. Go very slow to bend that left knee. Strap you can place off to the side. Let the left knee into the heart. You can gently rock the knee from side to side. And I like to plant my feet after that. If it feels better to extend both legs long for you, then please do that. Just a little bit of movement to see how the body is starting to begin. All right, we're going to work into the quads next. So you'll want one of your blocks. If you don't have a block, a, um, a couple of pillows or a blanket should work as well. What we are looking for with this one is a bit more height. So the higher the objects are underneath your lower spine, the more that you'll feel stretching through the quad and the hip flexor. Okay. So if you don't have blocks, I'll show you that option first. And I'll use my bolster here. So I'm going to lie down, lift my hips up, and place the bolster underneath my lower back. I'm going to extend my left leg out, get the heel on the ground, and I want to make sure that my knee and toes feel like they're pointing up. From here, I'm going to bend my right knee, can grab hold of the knee with my hands, the knee feels too far away, use your strap. And as I pull my right knee in, I'm thinking of reaching out from my left inner heel. And now as I do that, as I stretch through my left leg, notice that my heel, my left heel floats. And now this is getting me a really nice stretch through the quad and the hip flexor here. So if you don't have a block, that's what you can use your pillow or bolster. Um, or blankets and pillows. <laughs> And then if you do have a block, again, like before, you can go low or medium height of the block. Starting the same way. So again, the higher we go, the more that we feel in the stretch. So I am going to start with a medium height here. And I'm placing the block right where my camera is. So right at the lower spine. It's at a place where my glutes are sort of hanging off of the block. So my glutes can relax here. Same thing, I'm going to extend my left leg, make sure that's aligned properly, and hug my right knee in towards my heart. Now the more I pull up on the knee, the more I want to stretch through the left heel. And again, I'm getting that float of the heel to go deeper here. You can keep the foot on the ground to ease that intense stretch you might feel. This one we're just going to hold for about two and a half Three minutes on each side, so not as long as our other ones. And something subtle to look out for here is to make sure that the top of the left thigh still feels like it's dropping. So even though my left heel is raising above the mat, I'm not lifting the leg up. So now I'm just working muscle strength here. So the top of the thigh, really heavy, hanging off that sort of cliff edge of the block. And that's right where I'm feeling the stretch. So I don't want to be holding anything muscularly there. Relax your jaw. So there may be some tension that you're feeling in your low back and hips. The jaw can mimic, mimic that tension, so try to soften it. We're already halfway through, so if you need a break, take it. You can push yourself a little bit more, just make sure that the body wants it and the breath is still supporting it.
We have less than a minute here. Take three more breaths. And again, move out of this slowly, bringing your left heel to the ground. Start to release your right knee, step the foot to the earth. Then you can bend the left knee and just take a moment in this supported bridge. Maybe you can just gently rock your knees from side to side. Oh, that one feels so good. <laughs> if you need to make any adjustments with your block or your pillows to set yourself up for the second side, you can do that. And then when you're ready, the right leg is going to go long, heel on the ground, make sure knee and toes are pointing up. You'll bring your left knee into your heart. Using hands or strap. Now again, I'm going to try to make the sides the same. So for this first side, I'm going to keep my right heel down initially. My left side is usually tighter than my right. I'm just going to very gently start to coax my body into depth. And so as I exhale, I'm gently squeezing that left knee in a little bit more and reaching through the right heel just to see what that feels like to go a smidge deeper. As I inhale, I can sort of take myself out of that a little bit. So if your body needs just gentle movement, to feel better about this, to feel better about the shape, then as always, I'll do that. You should really feel as if you're trying to spread or even split the legs apart from one another. Again, doing that just with gravity helping you out here, not trying to force yourself into any certain shape. We're more than halfway through. We have just a little under a minute left. Take three more breaths here. Slowly bringing that right heel down and simultaneously releasing the left knee. Step the left foot. Right, 
take a moment in the supported bridge. Again, if it feels good, maybe gently rocking your knees. Then if you're balanced on your props underneath you, you can go ahead and extend your legs up to the sky. If you don't feel balanced or supported here, just keep the feet down. Let's take five deep breaths with our legs up here. Very good. Slowly start to bend the knees. You drop your feet one at a time back to the earth. And then slowly lift your hips up. Remove the props that you have from underneath you. And from your upper back, roll down the vertebrae. Take your time. Okay, go ahead and roll yourself off to one side. We're going to go into our final shape here. Gently press yourself up. So we'll need a couple of our props. <laughs> you can have your uh, bolster or pillows underneath your back. I'm going to do a little bit to support my neck here as well. So I'm going to take my blanket and place it at the top of my bolster. And this little fold here is going to go into that curve of my neck spine. Okay, so my head will be on the blanket, neck is fully supported, spine will be fully supported. We're going to finish with a Baddha Padmasana heart opener. So the soles of the feet will come together, the knees are dropping open. If this is a lot for that external rotation in the hip, then I want you to take your blocks and place them underneath your knees. And now for the bolster, it's up to you. You can pull the bolster all the way into the body and lie yourself back. For some people, that's okay to do in the lower spine. Others, we need a little bit more space. So you can push the bolster away and kind of line it up more underneath your lower rib cage here so that your lower spine is a bit more free, some more space So, again, I'm lying back on my bolster, blanket underneath my neck, knees are open, and for me, I'm feeling good at the end of our practice here, so I'm actually going to take the blocks away so that I can really let myself open. Okay, so my hips are feeling good, I don't need that support. The blanket can be tucked into the neck. We'll spend five minutes here to finish. If you would like to go beyond the five minutes that I'm queuing, this is feeling good. Please feel free to stay longer than that as well. Arms opening wide begin to help stretch the chest. Eyes are closed. Deep breath. We're in a softer variation of the heart opener we took at the beginning of class. So feeling into that deep breath again, not like the rib cage feels a bit more open. You breathe longer, you can breathe deeper. Maybe it just feels plain better to breathe, easier to breathe. Thank you. 
see if you can tap into all of the levels and the layers that you went through in our practice today. So noticing if this final pose, if there's a little less fidgeting or movement, maybe the mind is more still as well. And just feeling those immediate benefits from our practice. Let's take um, five more breaths here. Bring your arms by your side. Um, bring the hands sort of behind the backs of the thighs here and help the knees come back together. Together, so just a gentle push. Then you can let the legs go long. Reach your arms up overhead along your ears for an elongation stretch. And then flex the toes, wiggle the fingers, the uh, ankles and wrists. Release your arms back by your side. You can bend your knees. And then very slowly, gently roll up on your props. Try to come down on your right side if you can. Again, stay on your side for a moment, bringing knees up to your forehead, forward towards your knees and around your back. Taking your time, slowly press yourself up to an easy seated pose. Close your eyes once again, bring the hands to prayer in front of the heart. And just notice the change in your energy. From beginning of class to now. Moment of gratitude for this time on your mat. By your brain, sealing everything in. And namaste. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, again, restorative is a little bit different, definitely slower, more flexibility uh, focused. So I hope you enjoyed your practice today. Thank you so much for meeting me on the mats. I'll see you again soon.